Hello guys, so today we are going to create a text based cricket game or rather say cricket word game. So let's first understand what we are going to make. Everyone knows what is cricket and how it is played. A cricket game is played into two parts, first innings and second innings. Now the major challenge is how we are going to make that in code. So let's do that. So first we will make our python file. So let's start. So the approach I am going to use for this game is to create two functions bat and ball. And if the player bats in the first innings, then bat function will run first and then the ball function. If the player balls in the first innings, then the ball function will run first and then the bat function. Using this approach, we will start our code. Suppose the player decides to bat first. In batting, there are a few limited possibilities for each ball. Example, one run he can score, two runs, three runs, he can hit four or six or he can be out. There are also more possibilities like white ball and no ball that we will not consider for now. But when we want to improvise our code, we can add that features also. So what we have to do is for each ball, we have to select a random possibility from all these possibilities. So for that, we will need the random module of Python. And if the player scores runs, we want to update the score count of the player. And this game will continue until the player gets out. We can also add the limit of number of balls played by the player. That is also an additional feature that we can add in later in the code. So let's start with our game. So first let me import random module. Okay. Now I will make a list that will contain all the possibilities that can be hit by the player. So I will make a list that will contain all the runs, 4, 6 and also out. One more possibility is there, zero runs. Okay. Now we will make the function and we will name that function bat. Now in the bat function, let the balls is equal to zero. Let the number of runs also equal to zero. And we will specify the value of out variable as false. This will indicate that the player is not out now we will make a while loop to continue our game as long as the player is not out so i will write while not out okay while not out i want to take the input of the user input let's say i will give a prompt press s to to strike now we will check whether the user has entered s or not and then we will continue the game if input is equal to s then we will continue the game we will select a random choice from our list stroke is equal to random dot choice list okay so in a stroke variable a random choice from the list is selected suppose the number two is selected so the runs that are scored in this ball that is two is stored in the variable stroke okay this was just an example out also can be stored and any other value can be stored in the variable stroke so let's check what is stored in stroke and then act accordingly. If stroke is equal to out, we want to end the game and then, then we will change the value of out is equal to true. Okay, then the while loop will stop. For now, let's leave it as it is. Else what we will do, if stroke is not equal to out, then we will add the runs to our variable. So now the runs are updated and balls should also be updated by one. Now we will want this information to be displayed to our user. 
so we will use the print statement you have scored now we will use curly brackets you have scored runs in balls okay now let's do one thing let's add another else statement here else print wrong output just in case if the user enters anything else than the letter s try again also we can write it okay now let's test how it is going press s to strike you scored six runs in one ball okay press s to strike now i think we have exited the while loop but we are not but we have not given any print statement let us give one here print you are out okay s yes. we can see here our score and balls are updating perfectly just i want to check whether the out thing is working correctly or not you are out okay so the bat function is working nicely now let's make the ball function we will come to bat function again we will still have to make some changes ball function in ball the player will be balling right for now we can make the same variables again that is balls is equal to 0 runs is equal to 0 but this time the balls and runs will be of the computer i mean the runs will be scored by the computer we will have the same while loop here until the computer is not out okay while not out so out also variable we have to make here out is equal to false and here while not out we can ask for any other specific input by the user like uh, let's say letter d we can ask input uh, press d to throw right and if input is equal to d we want to get a random value of stroke stroke is equal to random dot choice list okay same as it is like we made in the bad function but this time the runs are not scored by the player they are scored by the computer and now we will check if stroke is equal to out out is equal to true and then we will print you took the wicket okay else what we can do else we can add the runs to stroke and balls also we can add plus is equal to 1 and we can print the output let's just take the same thing huh? control c control v but you have no computer computer scored computer scored this much runs in this much balls but what if we also give the update of this specific ball you are getting me right like uh, print f string we will use here you scored stroke
the same we can do here but here computer scored let's let us check our ball function computer scored 3 9 runs in 2 balls 15 runs in 3 balls you took the wicket okay so now we have made the basic of bat and ball now we need to connect them together and make our whole game right so let's do that so first so now we can do two things we can ask the player what he wants to do first he wants to bat first or ball or else we can use the toss type scenario 50 50 chances of getting batting and balling but for our convenience as we have to check the functions again and again we will leave this choice to the user so let's use a print print no input choice choice variable is allowed player choice we can use player choice is equal to input press a for bat first and b for ball first so here we are asking the input okay now we will check what player has given our input given us input if player choice is equal to a we can run bat elif player choice is equal to b we can run ball right else print wrong input here player decides to bat first but in the second innings he will have to ball so how will we do that and then how will we store the target scored in the first innings and then use it in the second innings so for that we have to think a bit so what we can do here is make another variable called first innings let me show you what i will do with that first innings first innings is equal to let's say true okay and then the player will bat and then the first innings is equal to false now the second innings will start right and then the player will ball okay so when the first inning is true the player will bat when the first inning is false that is the second innings will be true the player will ball the same we can do here okay but let's keep it for now and we have made this variable for a purpose right we will use this in our functions so while not out if stroke is equal to out out is equal to true and the player is out right now there are two scenarios if the player is out in the first innings then we want to execute some different lines of code and if the player is out in the second innings we have to execute different lines of code so why i will show you so now we have to add one more condition with our out checking here we will check whether the player is in the first innings or not if the first inning is true then the target will be set by the player and that the computer has to fulfill or has to chase in the second innings so what we can do here is make another variable called target target is equal to runs plus one na? target is always one more than the runs but we don't want target in the local scope right because we want to use it outside the function and also inside another function so what we can do is we can return the target at the end 
of the function or else we can use it as a parameter but returning would be better so we have to skip indentations and here we can return target if if and only if it is the first innings in the second innings we don't return target right we use the target in the second inning so let's wait let's see what else we can do we will print you have f string you have set the target target of target runs but if elif the player is out stroke is equal to out and first innings is false that is the player is in the second innings and when will this happen this will happen in this case when the player choice is equal to b okay let me just right if first innings is true ball first inning is false bat so here batting is in the second innings na so this whatever we write inside this will run so let's write here also we have to change out is equal to true so that we can exit the while loop and also balls is equal to 1 balls plus is equal to 1 sorry and we will print you are out you are out and we can print your total score is runs and the target was target the same thing we can do in the ball function also like here we can add and first innings is equal to true what we can do if the first inning is true we can make target variable target is equal to runs plus 1 and then print computer has set the target of runs no target runs okay and what if it is false if stroke is equal to out and first innings is equal to false we still have to make out is equal to true and we have to print you took the wicket okay so what we have done so far we have made two functions bat and ball and we have understood how to make the basic functionality of the game and also we have made a new variable first innings to know which innings is going on and then act accordingly now what we can do is get the target so always we get the target from the first innings right so what we can do is we can get the target from the first innings similarly we can get the target from the first innings target is equal to ball now if we are using the equal to sign with a function the function must return something right so both bat and ball might should return something but before that i will show you one more thing here we are taking target from the function bat and that target we will use in the function ball okay similarly here we have taken target from the function ball we will use this in the function bat now 
now let's understand how will we get the target so if first innings is true then the target will always be zero okay so we will make your target is equal to zero also we will set your target is equal to zero now what will we do is here we have made the target right now we will return the target return target and here we are using the target also we will use target to compare the run scored by you and the run scored by the computer let's understand now if we are in the first innings batting everything is fine the problem happens if we are in the second innings batting in that we have to check whether we have won the match or not if we are out before the accomplishment of the target of course we have lost the game so before that let us check whether the target is accomplished or not we will use that in the else statement here if first inning is false that is we are in the second innings and target is less or equal to runs what we can do is print u1 okay so what we have done here if you are in the second innings and you have completed the target that means you won the game and after this we also want to break the while loop and then we will exit our code fair and simple but what if we lose what if we are out before accomplishment of target that is this statement right here we are out in the second innings and also the target is not accomplished so here we can use a simple print statement that you lost the game the same thing we can do here in ball here we can print wait before print if statement first inning is false and target is less than runs just like we did above but here the computer wins because the score was because the computer was batting na and also here what we want to do is return target here and if you are able to take the wicket of computer before him accomplishing the target you win the game fair enough let us check whether everything is working fine or not here we will take let us give some white space okay control s let's first check the batting part press s to strike you scored 0 you scored 1 you are out you have set the target of 2 runs so here you can see i have scored one runs and always the target is one more than the runs i scored so here the target is two runs and now i will press d to throw the ball to the computer computer scored two runs in one ball computer one you lost the game okay so the batting part is running fine now let's check the bowling part also d to throw computer scored 3 computer scored 7 0 okay wicket 
you took you have set the target of computer has set the target of eight runs now press s to strike you scored one you scored seven runs and the target was eight runs so now i need one run you scored zero you your total score is seven and the target was eight so here we can find a flaw that we have scored the same amount of runs as the computer has scored but still we lose the game so the tie situation is here we can add another if statement and improve this let's run again a s to strike wrong output try again okay small s doesn't work let us fix that also oh that's a good score right 31 runs d2 throw you took the wicket you win so this was fairly simple now there is a lot of improvement that you can do in this game like uh, in the real cricket match the chances of scoring zeros and ones is far more than scoring four and sixes right so what we can do here is increase the number of one or zero also and thus you increase the chances of scoring one and zero okay what else you can do is add more number of wickets like here while not out instead of this what we can do if out is greater than or equal to 11 or 10 we can use an integer here so that we can add a whole team you can also add your no ball type something and then add more if statements see do, don't confuse this target with this target these two are different this is just a parameter and this is a variable a global scope variable okay and then we give this variable as a parameter to our function ball so your ball your target will not be equal to zero because we have set a new value so we won't be using the default value here we can also here we have used less than equal to runs we can also use equal to equal to runs and specify what to do in case of tie so this was the game thanks for watching